Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a brand new episode of Social Sessions, where we dive deep into the world of electronic music and the extraordinary individuals who have left an edible mark on the scene. Today we are privileged to have a true legend of the turntables and a pioneer in Scotland's electronic music landscape. He's a DJ, a producer and a cultural icon whose beats have fueled dance floors for decades. Join us as we embark on a sonic journey and get to know the one and only John Mancini, whose beats have not only made us dance, but have also defined a generation of music lovers. So, welcome to Social Sessions, John. Um, how are you doing? All good? Well, better than I'm in here beside you. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, all good, mate. All good. All good. Um, so, obviously we're going to go into kind of different things, dance music and all that, all your kind of history and stuff, but I'll just take you back to your own kind of childhood and growing up. So where did you grow up, John? So I grew up in a, a small small mining village. It's called Faltus. Oh, I know Faltus, aye. Everybody talks about it, but it's a great wee place. Aye. It's a great place. Bit of shithole. Aye. But it's full of good people. Aye. Look, well, there's some real wankers in there. Aye. But, but it's... it's <laughs> Get them everywhere. It's full, full of good people. Um, aye. Very talented village. It's people like... Well, we say Lewis Capaldi's half for Faltus. Oh, I see. Because Lewis aye. is aye. just in the road, but he, but he played in a lot of clubs up there. Uh, and he, he learned a lot of things, but he's also, his best friend is a wee guy called Connor Larkman, right. who's the LF system. He had right. the LF system, aye, number aye. one. So I know they, Sean and Connor as aye. well, they're there. There's also a guy called Adam Warrington, aye. who is the guitarist with Youngblood. He had the Youngblood. I know Youngblood, aye. And then you've got the fabulous Paige Turley. So <laughs> Paige is their pal. Paige, oh, that's, uh, Paige won Love aye, Island. That's right, aye. Aye. Uh, and there's a few others. There's there'll be Jack Aitchison who plays. He's the youngest player ever to play and score for Celtic. Aye. Um, and then there's there's your truly if you want to include me in that. There's that loads aye. of talent. There's 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 sun in the water up there. There's loads of talent. So um, when you were growing up, John, what was it? What kind of took you into the kind of? We always kind of attracted to dance music because obviously you'd have grew up with the kind of eighties and stuff. Eh? Like so, I was I've always a music fan. First and foremost, always music. Collected records um, for a young age. Very first record I bought was. ABBA, money, money, money. Aye. I bought it for six bonbons off my brother. <laughs> and then it would be, oh, it's early 70s, uh, sorry, late 70s, buying singles and 80s and it was always buying 12-inch records, always Aye. veering on the dance sort of stuff. Went through the hip-hop stage, buying a lot of hip-hop, electro. Um, I, was a, I was a rocker as well at one point. Right, I really yeah. liked ACDC and Iron Maiden. Just a kind of lover of music. I, I just like music. That, that's, that's it. I just like music. It's, uh, yeah, you can Did tell, I think you can tell with DJs who love music and they're no in it for, for instance, nowadays it's 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 a image over music we're looking at. I know. So I'm sure we'll cover that. Aye. But that's, you can tell a DJ who was in it for the music, they weren't in it for any fame or money because there wasn't any money in DJing at one no. point. There wasn't any money in DJing. So, it's totally yeah. different now. It? Yeah, it's obviously you've got the, there's been a switch in there for the kind of, Vinyl, kind of, and that a lot of DJs would say that like that's no real DJing with the electrical stuff, and obviously it's an art in any way, any form. But what do you think of that kind of? So the format argument has rumbled on for years, and I have no issues with moving on with technology. The new technology, CDJ three thousands, and the new mixers and all that are phenomenal, mm -hmm. and it's great, and it's so much better on the back. Carrying a USB right. than 200 records. No, I can imagine. Which would kill you. Used to have marks on my shoulder and stuff with bruise marks right. with carrying. And then travelling abroad was really difficult because right. you had to really select carefully what you were taking. Whereas you just shove everything on a USB and you're away. Um, there was a recent thing with DJ Pierre who done a thing about, about DJs who learned on vinyl. Mm -hmm. And I, I see a lot of people going, oh, he thinks he's great because he's. he's plays vinyl and, and wear this and wear that. And that was nothing to do with it. I think it was more the case of, it wasn't the, our, our school of DJing mm -hmm. was a real hard school, harder school than what Aye. it is now. And I'm not knocking anybody that's learning now. That's, that's not the case. But you can fake it very easy now. Mm -hmm. And you couldn't fake it then. Aye. You had to work hard. You had to collect the, the best, or the, work hard to find the, the right tracks because they were limited. Mm -hmm. You had to blag a lot, you had to find, you had to spend a lot of money, but you also had to work hard on your 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 craft. Aye. Because you had to learn how to mix properly under under different conditions and find the records and kind of line them up. It wasn't the same as flicking through and pressing no. and all that. You didn't have all that stuff. So you, you learned in a different way. You learned in a harder way, which 
me, I thought it was a, it was a, it was a, a better school aye, if aye. that for forward. Um, it was a better school of learning. Uh, you did had to work harder, and if you were shit, you were found it. Aye. You could not fake it. You couldn't look good or you, who you were. You couldn't. You couldn't. You couldn't fake it. You couldn't put mixes on. It didn't work like that. Aye. It was vinyl. Was was a different learning curve. And I, I, I believe everybody should try and learn a bit of vinyl right. and try and understand the art of DJing because that was came through as started kind of hip hop, didn't it? Was it kinda... well, the vinyl would vinyl would always been there for a while, but it would probably be starting with the scratching with the, the ghetto parties and the street parties in, right. in New York and stuff, and then then it would be obviously the the warehouse and the acid house, and that's that's obviously that's where it, where it stemmed from the the, right. the, the the house scene, but. That was where the vinyl came from, and as I said, it was a it was a different learning time, and you you, you got found out very quickly. I think they, well, obviously you know my big cousin Brian and yeah. Brian tried Hi, Brian. a few times. <laughs> How you doing, Brian? Uh, but Brian tried to teach me a few times, um, and I, it was really hard. And I remember I had a wee kind of DJ like on, at that time they were rubbish, but it was like a wee online kind of DJ thing, I can't remember what it was, but Brian, I showed Brian a virtual DJ or something it was called, and it was dead easy, like you could do dead yeah. easy. Brian was like, but I, I don't, he, he, I showed him and he was like, I don't really understand that. And it was a, uh, it was a way, I'm, this is before I was even in prison, John, so I'm talking 2004, five, but um, I could not do it, do you know what I mean? And Brian looked, made it look so easy. So I can imagine, like obviously you'll be the same, but it just, it was an art. It definitely was an art form. Yeah, it, it, you really did have to work hard, and you you had to you had to love it. You had Aye. to love what you done. Um, said it, it, it's totally different. It was totally different. Don't get me wrong. This this the philosophy still there is pick the right tunes in the right order and play them at the right time. Aye, it still stands. It doesn't matter what the format is. No, but it does make it a hell of a lot easier. And there is an easier inroads into the scene. Aye, for a lot of people who are in it. For me, for the Aye. wrong reasons. Uh, I think you have to be in it for, for music. Um, I see so many people who just... Listen, everybody's a DJ now. Aye. Every f <laughs> every person is a DJ. Everybody, all these celebrities come along and say, oh, it's a DJ set, DJ set. You're like, fuck off. No. And it's really quite frustrating in that front. Whereas it's, the scene is slightly being stolen by people who are in it for the wrong reason. And the scene the scene's changed vastly. Um so see, I'll, yeah. take, I I'll, I'll take you, obviously, I'm going to go right back, John, right to the kind of rave scene, right, and like Hangar 13, Metro, and, that. and again, Brian was the one that kind of told me all that, and I just always wish I had experienced it. Um, see, being a kid, aye. Uh, in 1988, 89, when, when life was pretty shit, aye. you had the Thatcher years, you had all that stuff, mm. you had the minor strikes and stuff, and then this Acid House thing came along, and uh, this new youth culture movement, and it grabbed every kid. And the space of probably six months, six months, eight months, it just exploded. And going to these gigs, with carefree, not giving a fuck about anything that was going on, mm -hmm. working Monday to Friday in shit jobs, and you got to the weekend, and it was fucking, you would go to these things that were blowing your mind. Aye. They were blowing your mind, like, for instance, the first big raves would be like dirt box and be slam in the park and it'd be revolution and all these things, which was at the plaza. Aye. Um, and then obviously the street rave thing started mm -hmm. down in there in, in 89, September 12th, 1989. And we went down in a bus for, for where we'd be locals, all these local kids, two Aye. buses away down, fucking charge. We were leaving it, leaving at 12 on a Sunday morning because it started at two in the afternoon. It was oh, actually a that? Sunday afternoon. Oh, was it? People talk about all these daytime clubs that are popping up. Aye. Street Rave was based on a Sunday afternoon. Right. That's when it started. Two, two till two, and you had 16, 1700 kids in this old dance hall, this ballroom, giving it fucking large to acid house music, Aye. strobes and smoke, and giving it, it was, it was don't get me wrong, Aye. drugs played a big part in I know. what was happening then, right? And Everybody was in the same wavelength. Mm -hmm. They were all just, everybody joined in with these DJs who you trusted the DJ. The dance floor experience that I, I, I remember then Aye. was second to none. So was the DJs that were playing at that time? It was, it was a lot of, well, Graham Park might pick in with the Aye. first two guests 
and you would have the the res but well, Boney was resident then. I was the, I was the resident with, with Street Freight at the very start. Boney with Bob Jeffries with Scott Gibson. And they had they had some uh, MC Duke and it went on to the stuff like bass heads, uh Utah Ultrasonic, Saints. No, that, the that Ultrasonic never really they it? would they would Ultrasonic would come later. Right. At the original start it was Ultrasonic would I don't even had think we had Ultrasonic at we never played they would play a hanger. Right. So Street Dave was there eighty nine to ninety three. That's crazy. Eighty nine as long as that's the weird. Yeah. It, it was it was such a good time to be a kid. Aye. A kid, fucking probably was forty five. <laughs> to be a kid in that environment and be something that came along, and we took it as it was like a religion to us. Because it was, it, it was. I mean, I don't know if you've have you ever seen the film Beats? You have. Is that close? Is that kind of close? Um, to you? Yeah, it's the same sort of coming of age um, thing that yeah, similarities. Aye. It's the similarities with base basically with everybody that was working in a factory or something or. Do you know what I mean? And then you went out and party at the weekend and it was crazy that what was going on because you went for the 80s, which was flicks and breaking, getting all these big Aye. discos and stuff. And they were good discos. They're, they're a prime example of, of the way it changed when the Hitman and Her went to. Do you know how the, do you know Hitman and Her? No. So the Hitman and Her was a programme on Channel 4. I think it was Channel 4. And it was on at 2 o'clock in the morning, 1 2. Aye. And it was Pete Waterman and Michaela Strachan who went to these clubs and they had all these people dancing Aye. in clubs and it was all, but then they went to the Hacienda one night right and the hit man and her that Pete Watermat could not understand the fucking thing what was going on they didn't <laughs> get it Aye. and it's it's quite it's quite iconic in the in the, the acid house scene. and they're going we have no idea what's going on and the whole place is fucking giving it big licks and all Aye. that stuff and Graham Park might pick in a residence they're there and it's just it's just a thing you go that's how different it is for there so we were quite happy that they did not understand it because we seen ourselves who were different. in that scene as different. Mm -hmm. And we went and done our thing and they said it was our secret, it was our Aye. thing, it was growing up as a kid, you wanted to be exclusive Definitely. probably, you don't want to be commercial, you don't, but it was commercial as in the fact that all these big dance tracks were in the charts. Mm -hmm. From bass heads to Rich in Paradise, FPI, Gat Decor, all these things, Frankie Knuckles, Aye. whistle song, is they're on the charts. It's, it's unreal. Did what they get was, obviously they would have been, but the, where the, where kind of what level were they getting into the charts? Joint? Number one. Did that? Black Did Box was number one. Was it was it? number one. Number two. Num number one. I think was Black it? Box. Aye, aye. Aye. Is that? Pump Pump Jam. All these tracks. Oh, That's aye, what I'm aye, saying. Aye, so right, see when right. you look at the charts, aye. they were all top ten. Aye. It was the weirdest thing, and we didn't want it to be go no. around. But being a kid then was 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 pretty special, mate. Was was just I can't describe how how. How as one you were. Aye. The dance floor was, a, I would say, one love, one dance floor. It was it was pretty special. Don't get me wrong, I don't know if that's just me looking back with Misty Eye as a kid. And I don't think, I think MD that grew up, I was I grew up with trans, Dave Pierce, kind of like all that kind of Which stuff. was a great time. It was a great time, definitely. But I think I still wanted to, I wished I had been, and I don't know if it was just listening to Brian and listening to them, but I, I just wished I had experienced that era. So, so see that era you're talking about, probably 99 in 2001. Aye, aye, that was a brilliant glory was, was, was fantastic aye, everywhere. Because the Super Club had came along. Aye. And what our classes, the big, big classics were coming out, and, and Trance and Stardust, Defected had started, aye. all this stuff. And that was a glorious time to aye. be. The Archies was, was probably at its peak. I think we peaked, as a species as well, aye. at the Millennium. Aye. I think it's slightly deteriorated in all aspects of life since then. Mm -hmm. it's, there's been good bits, but I think we as a, we didn't have social media. Aye. Um, the country was in a good place. I think we, I think we peaked as a species. Unfortunately. I think um, when you go back, like obviously I'm going to talk about the ecstasy, right? Because that was, that was a big thing. And obviously had like ease are good and all that. Ebony's are good and stuff. And it was, um, it was one of the times where it, you, People would still say that drugs made were good at that time, and I would never ever, I would never ever like go, oh, drugs are good, and I would never say to MD to try it. But the experience that people did get was unbelievable, and I think um, when you look at the death, the, the way the cocaine scene is now, and it's, yeah. it's kind of getting overlooked, and the way they went after the ecstasy scene, it doesn't make sense to me. 
cocaine, cocaine's a, a cocaine's ruined the dance scene. Aye. Part of it. That and social media and that the fact that you don't need to go to a club to get your home now. Aye. aye. <laughs> right, swipe left, swipe left. Aye. Right, it's all changed. Pitting the social enough. stuff has just changed. It's all different. Um, And you'll see people who go to clubs take cocaine or whatever and they want to go home after five minutes and I know. the curtains and listen to grass grow it's mental isn't it um, so it's the most unsociable kind of drug that that in the dance and back then it was just there was it was ease that people took but I think what dare I say it I think they were better quality I think aye I never done ease no I aye, 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 my aye. thing back then I never, didn't they smoke didn't they drink um, I think you can just see where the levels obviously I've kind of done a lot I've got kind of postgraduate stuff and substance abuse and all that kind of stuff and the levels of drugs you can were, tell oh the levels right. of drugs that you're getting i mean I don't, I don't even really think the drugs that you're getting in this day and age is mdma mdma comes from a plant and that plant's pretty rare now so they've sp switched it it's hang obviously we'll hell that mandy do you know what mm. i mean and, uh, so it's a different drug it's still in a different it's chemical kind of makeup but it's a totally different right. drug um so back then when you're talking, it would have been pure ecstasy, pure MDMA, which a lot of people don't see. They're in France and stuff like that. If you have got a missus, that MDMA is a legal drug over there. MDMA, you, you, they give you small doses, micro doses, with your missus so that you can connect again. Okay. So there is something about connection. Obviously, that's a government that's doing that. Yeah. the, the you, could, you could tell when these were good Aye. in the club. Aye. Because you remember, you'd be DJing to people like beer heads and drinking mm -hmm. them and there was a lot of violence I know before aye, aye. ecstasy came along and obviously the violence for the soccer mm -hmm. hooligans is there as well and then this ecstasy came along and changed it mm -hmm. whereas you had all these Rangers Celtic Hibs all that in, mm -hmm. in the same place and then we're alright we're all cuddling, all cuddling each other, each other. Aye, it's alright don't worry fighting about it fighting on the Saturday cuddling aye. on the Sunday aye. and that was the, the whole difference so you could have a room with 5,000 people on this wavelength and the control and the power you had in your hand with these records Aye. was pretty phenomenal. Feel like a god. <laughs> it, was just, it was just a... I don't think there was any drugs could make you feel as good as Aye. when I'm dropping this tune and it's fucking big piano and the whole... All these hands go up. Like, fucking, this is fucking mega. It's Unbelievable. Brilliant. It's just brilliant. All your mates and everybody's on the same wavelength. Aye. Out of fucking nut, bro. <laughs> but everybody's everybody's having the greatest time of their life. Aye. You've got your kids, you're, 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 with all your friends, you're listening to big mu this music that's came along and you're part of this youth culture. And it was fucking incredible Aye. times. It really was. Don't get me wrong, there were some shite times back then Aye, as well. of course. But looking at it as a, as a general whole, we were so fortunate to have been there at the start of that scene. Aye. Absolutely fortunate. Um, I feel really privileged to be a part of that. I think, um, obviously there was a few kind of big high profile overdoses that brought that, that, brought that kind of light, that, that scene to light. And when you look at overdoses and stuff with ecstasy, nine times out of 10, it's because you drown yourself. It's, yes, it's, it wasn't it's ecstasy that aye, killed them. Aye, it's usually... Um, There's no disrespect to aye, anybody that no, unfortunately no. passed away, but the, the problem was, was either overheating aye, or drowning. Aye. Drinking too much water, which is the, the Leah Betts thing, I think, aye, was, was too Leah much Betts, water, aye. unfortunate. And there was a few, a few unfortunate deaths down at Hanger. I know. That was after Street Dave. Um, absolutely scat oh, I know. horrible thing. That kid goes out and doesn't he, doesn't he come no. home type thing. That is, the, that is the problem with, with drugs. And um, I do believe, like, I, I think, obviously, I think you've been to a few re kind of recovery events and stuff. John and you, do, you can make that atmosphere there if you yeah. if you have the right kind of people when everybody's on the kind of right. So so I've done I've done ten recovery maybe more. And the very first one was a, my mate of mine Jim Kirtland who asked me to go and play at this, and I'm going. It's got to be pish. Aye. It's got to be fucking I know. Pish. So they have the three day event. I think it was a whatever it was some some Cokies Anonymous aye, convention aye. or something, and he asked me to play at it and and. It was, it was really strange. They had this big talk and I, I actually heard the last day speaker and he was so funny. Aye. And it's like a big family. Oh, they all go aye. and it's, all, so it's really, really aye. quite odd to see. And then I put the first track on and they're up and shoulders and they're fucking swinging for the ceiling. I'm going, ah, Jim, what, they're all they're not. He said, no drugs in here. Aye. I says, I'm telling you, right. I says, they're high on life. Aye. 
and I've and I I took my while to get my head around that. Aye. And the whole I'm talking the whole dance oh, floor. Oh, I know I've seen it. It's amazing. They got and they're clapping and they're shouting going like that. And I remember playing a uh, remix of "Love Is in the Air." Aye. And the whole place sung it. Aye. Gloriously, it was Aye. fucking a, what a wee moment. And I, I've done quite a few since. Uh, and it's really odd because I and then there's Jim says to me, "So you've got to remember." Most of these people have not in here haven't they seen you straight. <laughs> yeah, I know. Because they've not been straight. And you don't know, they don't remember it. So see when you go at the recovery event, you can remember it. Um, which is it's the, it's the, it's the odd, it's, I, I advise anybody to go and experience definitely. this. It's, it's strange as fuck. It's really strange to see this group of people, I'm talking like two or three hundred people aye, aye. having the time it's like it's like they've had the best ecstasy aye. in the world. But they're no drugs or drink. Aye. There's nothing there. They're high on life because they're just happy to be here and happy to be in a better place. Well, most of them, obviously. Aye. And it was, it was, it was, it was pretty strange. Now I remember I, I met the guy at the. There's one in Glasgow in the Pony Parks. Aye, they, they're doing it. Aye, and Michael, me and Michael, aye. me and Kilke done it, and and the guy, I hadn't seen for years, and he told me he'd been through a bad time and he was getting out the other side, and it was great to see. And he goes, "See all this here." All these people who have done all this, says that's your fucking fault. Fuck that! This is your you fault. All the tunes you're gear. This is you. It's just done that. It was a joke. Aye, aye. Time, it was funny. So your fault. Thanks very much. Mate. I, see, obviously, there's that argument about gateway drugs, and um, I don't know. Like, I'm not. I'm not. Like, I, I, there's a lot of people I know. I believe that there's trauma and stuff. There's childhood stuff there's a lot of stuff goes on that makes you go into addiction it's not just um that you used ecstasy and that there's a lot of people that done that and never would only yeah. kind of be an, a, an addict do you know what i mean um so there's a lot it's very complex very complex issue but just as amazing um and as you said i would, I would tell him that you go and experience a recovery because uh, you don't you don't believe it to see it like how good that is it was it was wild man it was it was, it was we actually had bez at the last bez was at the last one and a uh, Oh, the place was bouncing. Is he in recovery? Aye, aye, he's, a, he's actually <laughs> in the recovery. Is he? Aye, aye. We're fucking dying. I know, I know. Um, but aye, so he, he was doing it. It was brilliant, John, so it was. Um, so I'm going to just take you into kind of like your own kind of work and um, your own kind of experiences. And so where did you, where was your kind of big, your first kind of big gig? When was your It'd first? Be street Rave. Street Rave. Street Rave. Uh, I'd done, done some local stuff. And the local stuff was great. Aye. Was was because I was I was in a place called Whitburn. I know uh, Rumours. It was a pub up the stair. That was where I got my first residency sort of thing. I'd done a couple of acid house parties, if you want to call it that, um, local, just with mates and stuff. And so we were, we were pretty clued up, to be fair, on 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 what was going on and and the the, the tunes we were buying and that. And it was all oh, was underground and twenty third precinct was the haunt where you went Aye. all your vinyl religiously went there for. For years. 15 years, <laughs> every Saturday morning. Spent Is that the one in the tune that you kind of go, you're doing the stairs I think it's an odd bins or something. <clears throat> it's a wine place. Aye, it's right across right. from the Blue Lagoon at that's Bath right. Street. Aye. Um, Billy Kilty owned that. That was that was a haunt for... It was just part of, part of the 90s, part of the late 80s, 90s. Glasgow, when, when Glasgow was flourishing, uh, it was healthy and that was a big party. Glasgow history, basically that, 23rd Aye. precinct. Um, where are we? What are we talking about there? So we're talking about like your own, like so obviously I've spoke, kind of spoke about like the street raves and stuff, but I was just kind of yeah, thinking sorry. maybe going into the nineties. So, 90s the, first, and so stuff. the first, the first gig was was local, <clears throat> and it would be kids up up in this bar who we just went crazy, and half the people in there <clears> who were older went, "What the fuck's going on here?" <laughs> but we had a big following of people who a big, maybe 100, 150 people, young kids Aye. who were getting into the scene, Aye. and we started let's let's go to buses, and every week. There was gigs like over the country. There wasn't a lot of gigs. Aye. So everybody went to the same gig. Everybody would go to the plaza, everybody would go to the Civic Centre in Motherwell. And one of them came up was was Street Rave and it was at the Air Pavilion. Aye. So you're thinking, air, Aye. ice cream, <laughs> fucking kids. Fucking, Craig Tara. Yeah, buttons. fucking bucket and spade and all that stuff. And I, 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 I still sits me with this day, driving over, there's a bit, there's a bit along the 70, is it 77? I don't, oh, I don't even drive John, I'm rubbish. 77, I think it is. And you just come over the hill and you see the sea at air. And I, I still see it and there's somebody shouts, there's the sea, Aye. I'm going, fucking great, man, <laughs> this would be great. Seaside town, and you go down in this, It's everybody knows what the pavilion is. I've seen the pavilion, the four pillars. 
and the bass is booming and I've blacked all the windows out and you just go in and they had fucking four strobes in a smoke machine and it's just fucking giving it brilliant and you just get in and go that and you just get lost in it aye because you dress to go and dance everybody got there and went to the dance floor aye Hey, you weren't bothered how you looked and all that, went you know. Oh, you like, just, you fucking, you maybe had a wee towel if you're sweating and stuff. And can, that was what it was. Every single person aye. went either go and get a drink and, and then drink, but every, it was like a charge we're in and we're away at the dance floor. And all these kids facing this DJ, whatever was going on, and religiously and all in sync, moving and dancing and clapping and fucking cheering and whistles and, you know, <laughs> I know. Uh, I used it's to a football the, match. Aye, every week he's flinty. He used to, he, they used to wear the boilers. So you see people like that, didn't you? Well, we had, we had the, aye, but we gave, Street Dave gave Prodigy the first Scottish gig. Oh, did you? Yeah, it's quite a few things. Uh, M people, um, Utah, Utah Saints was, was ah, created does, well, basically in Street Dave because, so I can't remember what it was. Yeah, no, sorry. We, Tim, Tim Utah, we used to come aye. up with DJ, good friends with Tim, and Tim, the first ever gig was was Street Dave as well. Aye. So, yeah, bro- so it was a quite it a lot of people then made their name there. Sorry, then, was that? Quite a lot of people kind of made their name down at Street Dave. Well, a lot of people made their name. They were making their name here and there, but in Scottish, Scottish wise, there was a few things that would be sweat box and a broth with, with Tony Cochran. There would be the Slam Boys were doing stuff here and there. Um, was there something Metro Stalin? would be gone. Was that? So, something still in the food bar? Was that was food bar would be there, but I think I think that was. A, Fubar was, so we went to the Fubar after we done sh- the pavilion. Right. Pavilion days ended and we went and we done the Fubar and we done the tunnel. And the Fubar was more a hardcore thing. Right. But it was an all-nighter. Aye. And I wasn't the biggest fan of the Fubar, if I'm honest. No. I just didn't like all-nighters and stuff. Aye. I just wasn't the my thing. And it was the Dunn House, but it was on a smaller level. But when Street they've done it, I think they were called Street Dave's Salsa was the name that they were using. And we done digweed and Pete Tong and all that stuff. So we done all that, aren't they? We were the odd type thing, but they, a lot of hardcore. Aye. That was, a, a, it's, a, it's a big part of Scottish history, the food bar. Aye. Yeah. I know that's the, the only reason I mean, I've mean i never been to the food bar and I don't, I don't think it's kind of like the way it was now. I think it's more like a kind of wee nightclub. More commercial. It? It's the same, it's the same sort of, same thing what it is, but it's, it's slightly more, listen, that's, that's the way the world is. I know. I know Tracy and Stephen who own that and they own, they own, oh, they own that big place in Edinburgh with the big Bohemia or something it's called. Aye, they Bohemia, own that, just aye. part of the, I think they call it the Castle Leisure Group aye. and they own uh, the thing in Falkirk. Well, this, I, I, this city, is, city, they own the city group and all that stuff. So. I think there's a, the, the street rave kind of thing seems to be coming back. There seems to be like, like I've seen like, it's only again social media, but like you see like a young team or kind of starting their own illegal raves and all that again. And yeah, so I, th- I think lockdown had a lot to do with that. I Aye. think the, the lockdown ravers, as they're called, Aye. they come out the other side rebellious Aye. and want to experience. I, th- I think lockdown was, was, was good in some aspects. It was really, really bad in, in some other aspects. But um, I think there was a lot of people regained their love for dance music because they've seen a lot of streams. Aye. So the streams for me were... If you done techno, and that was difficult because techno is designed to be listened to in a room, aye, in a big room with a big sound system, aye. strobes, Booming. and whatever. That's what it's for. Aye. You have to feel the energy in that. But we were then Street Dave, which was legacy brand, which we weren't trying to reinvent the wheel. We're just doing what we do: old tunes, remixes, party stuff, and people, people, aye, people enjoyed, it. loved it. People loved it. People would sit outside there and have their TV up outside their manhut that they built, and they'd they'd do the full thing. Aye. 12 hours, 14 hours, whatever Aye. it was, they just joined in. And that was a good thing that people who were older clubbers had regained some of the passion they had for it because everybody was in the same boat Aye. and you had nothing else to do. So everybody was sitting there. Aye. And it was good because you could you could be involved because there was chats and stuff and people who you hadn't seen for years and years. You've got to remember, that's 30 years of dance music. Aye. People all meeting sort of in the one place. Aye. For instance, we done the first live stream, and I done it in my, my room, and I had done the green screen. And it looked like I was at the uh, the SWG three. I remember people saying, "How the fuck's he in SWG 3 <laughs> But I done a green screen, Aye. and I was sitting there, and the dogs sitting there, and fucking just the tunes, just myself. But there's there's like five thousand people online chatting, 
like something like 50,000 comments or something. It was weird. Aye. As soon as I switched on, and I first time I really kind of got nervous actually Aye. doing this. So I'm doing it live and I'm streaming it and I'm DJing, but I'm watching the chat. Aye. And it's just all these people who are in the same boat, living in fear. Aye. Whatever's going on, they're all in the world because you can see it and they all join. Right, yeah, yeah but all around the world. I'm in Australia and I'm watching Aye. Straight Rave and I'm watching <laughs> this and it's it was a really nice thing. Aye. You could feel the love in the air type thing for all these people who were A lot of people were, were needing something, didn't they? They were needing something, aye, aye. Fucking unknown. See, you look back at it, some of the unhealthy aye. thoughts that were going on are the unhealthy things. You're saying, God, this is fucking nuts. And it, you aye. look at that again. See, I get released for prison, John, right into um, COVID. So for me, it was a weird... Thing because I, it was I actually it was we I've said this before. See Castle Huntley at the time that's open prison. Castle Huntley was probably the most open place in Scotland at that time because we were the, we were classed as a household. Uh-huh. So With the full lotties, full lotties, right? Fuck. So we were uh, playing football and <laughs> uh, we were got in the gym. And, and, up? Aye, and it was uh, it wasn't it? The screws were like some of the screws were getting annoyed because they were obviously going home and getting aye, locked aye. up and they were going I fucking shouldn't be doing that it's the only gym in Scotland it was, so we get sh- it's all stopped but we were still allowed to kind of walk about kick about and um, when I got out I didn't really I didn't really know so I got out right in it and it was it was good for me in a way like because it was like just him wasn't and my on? I it wasn't full on yeah. and uh, it gave me a wee bit of time to adjust. Because you probably been a wee bit feeling institutionalised. Oh, aye. I, so I, to I, come out and go into the big bad world again. Aye. To come out for the big bad definitely. Prison, ish, definitely. Oh, it's probably two felt different safe worlds. in there. Two different it's worlds. No George. safe, but you know, know what I mean? Is oh, that, definitely. Aye. Two different worlds. Because I know a few people who have come out and just aye. struggled for a bit to start with, and it was like, this is fucking odd. Oh, I, it, 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 I know people, hard guys that are kind of well known guys and stuff that. Uh, I'll, go, I'll tell their family don't come and see me for a week because they're scared and it's feared you know what I mean they, they, they don't know what to do and yeah. it is, it's, just, it's a weird thing but I'll take you back obviously to Covid so it was I, I, I didn't actually really see it I seen some people inviting you to stuff and WhatsApp do you want to come to do you want to listen to this and do you want yeah. to listen and I never really done it but that's amazing to see like that actually something was brought back and uh, which I think I think I think for instance I think I think Street Dave got maybe 20,000 extra fans on what they were they were, they wow. were putting out and they were people were, were just doing streams and, and putting a lot of work into them mm-hmm. and DJs you could never get were, were, were happy to be I involved because they'd fuck all else they in the house Aye. so people started doing setups like this Aye. <laughs> Aye. Uh, and and buying cameras and how did they green screen how did this and people started going just to just to make themselves busy and people put a really good bit of effort in it and there was a lot of good things come out like charity charity was aye I mean I was probably involved in quarter of a million pound worth of brilliant, fundraising man. brilliant throughout the whole lot aye um, not just me there was there was a lot of aye. involved the one the, the, the Downing Street one raised 510 grand Brilliant. That was one. Uh, but there was loads of... It was just charity. Everybody just wanted to help. Everybody wanted to look after each other. Everybody just be safe, stay safe. All there that was shit. that wee kind of spirit of, of, yeah, of looking fucking at... Quickly, aye, aye. Ones we went back. I know. Back and then you'd end up Downing Street fucking partying away, do you know what I mean? But anyway, yeah. uh, it's so if I take you on to kind of like my era then, right? So I was like my era, like eight, 17, 18, it was like Paul Van Dyke. Like obviously Dave Pierce, so they kind of the trans kind of era, yeah. which we spoke about, has been a, a really good era. Um, what kind of gigs were you doing at that time, John? Was so, we still with Street Street Dave was still going. Street Dave would be once a year. Aye, but Street Dave had developed into colours. All oh, right, in, is that in, colour, right? Yeah, in nineteen ninety six, Street Dave developed into colours. Street Dave, the rave, the word rave was slightly frowned upon. It wasn't the best, as in times had just changed. The big the big corporate sponsors had come along, the super clubs had come along, and things had changed. It went global. Aye. Uh, Radio One had jumped on board, as in their, their, their Ibiza weekend. Or you, that's when you knew it was getting really Aye. big. Well, Annie Mack, know that. Yeah, I know that. Still, she would be way back then, but it would be Dave Pierce, Aye. Judge Jules, Aye. and all that stuff. And, and Ibiza was blooming, uh, but it, the glory years was, was, I remember, the Radio One weekender. And pl- the playing ATB till I come and oh, stuff. Oh, probably now. Now this was this was at Mambo, but they didn't have any corporate stuff. They just put the speakers out, 
and everybody went on the beach and the rocks and just spilled and that for me was was glorious. Aye, it's it's way too corporate now. It's way too I know sterilised. Um, but then it was it was phenomenal and I loved Ibiza then. The the, the music was healthy. You had let's say all the big tunes. I call them Saturday night tunes. Aye, Saturday Stardust, fucking all Aye. this thing, all defective stuff, all this. But the trance thing was really healthy. Aye, really healthy and a. Uh, I think that kind of obviously you know better than me, but I think that kind of built the the foundations, like Tiesto and people like that to go and to be the superstar DJ. I think. Well, Tiesto was the Tiesto was the guy for me that changed it all. Aye. So Tiesto was the first guy to do the stadiums. Aye. The first guy to do the big stages. Aye, he'd done that. I think he'd done the, the Elements tour. I think it was called. So you had the had waterfalls and showers, and then they had the fire and. Oh, that's so I kind of brought in a lot of. He was first. Aye. He was he was first. I think he sold the the, the big stadium out in, in Amsterdam two days in a row. He sold it, but it was him and a, and his team that really really changed it. They Aye. took it from clubs, they took it from raves, whatever it was, and they took it to stadiums and they made it a spectacle. Aye, with the big pyrotechnics, the whole sh that was Aye. Tiesto that changed it. So because obviously I remember watching an Annie Mac program, right, and obviously there was loads of people on it and. Um, it was, I, thought, I don't know if it was Paul, Paul Oltenfolder, Pete Tom, one of them anyway, was going to the airport and he says he'd been asked, he says, basically, we have been in Ibiza every year, he says, but this year I got a phone call for whatever club, where it was, Space or whatever, do want to do two weeks resident in here? And he was like, aye, and we'll get you a plane and all that. He went, that never happened before. He went and like, I was like, aye. He says, I end up turning up and I, I, I thought I was this big fucking superstar DJ and we go there and there was fucking loads of and we were all getting private jets. He says, yeah. um, I think that, it's I the, can't remember what year that was, John, but that's... The, the thing about when it changed, it became very corporate, um, very money-orientated. It sucked a lot of the life of the moment. It, I know. it works in some aspects. You get bigger, more professional shows and there's, there's some f f fantastic shows that you've been at and played at. And, but then it becomes really... Is the atmosphere as good? It's, it's, but yeah, don't get me wrong. Back then it was still phenomenal. You had the Archies was coming to oh, speak I, as well. I, 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 I. And you had all that stuff, and it, they had you had healthy clubs in there. So you'd have there was colours inside out. There would be death disco, and there would have been like pressure I, slam. I don't know, pressure it was called at the time. Was it not a big one in uh, your way, Livingston? There was room at the top. Room at the top. Room but you've top. had you had all these each weekend mm -hmm. would have. Two and a half thousand, three thousand, right? Different punters aye, aye. in in the arches, aye. and there are other things in between. I think they had octopus and stuff, and that. But it was so healthy. Aye. Queue right round the door, and just just um, absolutely amazing times. That I can't tell you how good that the arches was then. What do you think killed that? Then what do you think can I? Still had its society, society, phones, drugs. No. Still, it still was the greatest club ever for me when it was closing. The Archies. Um, I seen it. Yeah, the Archies. Is it reopened? Yeah, it was opened for a for a pilot scheme. Uh, I think it was called New World. It was called. Um, Aye. Difficult. Uh, I seen some good things about it. Um, I seen some things that just didn't sit right with me. But that's just Aye. me being a grumpy old bastard here. Got to, got to be true to yourself the, the, as well, John. The, 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 the spirit of the dance floor was there in some things, and some things are just like, holy mm -hmm. fuck. Uh, it's a lot of, um, I, I see it when I go, and I don't go anywhere, by the way, like, but I see some, some of my pals will send me videos, SWG3 looks quite good, that looks as if there's atmosphere yeah. there. Um, but there seems to be a lot of, the young ones just really, really kind of, on their, their, their looks and their, the way they... Yeah, that's what I said earlier. It's, just, it's more about image now than music. Definitely. Aye. Um, there's things they'll sell out in instance, but I'll go and I'll, I'll, I've seen some of these parties and, do you know what I say, some of these DJs are substandard. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not trying to knock anybody for being, but they're given a platform by the promoters mm -hmm. who probably don't vet them, probably don't, they don't programme the night sometimes properly. Aye. They'll go for 115 BPMs to 150. It's just fucking wild. So I'm watching some of <laughs> it. Um, just mental. And these DJs, some of the DJs, don't listen. There's some great DJs out there. Aye. Some great music. There's some great clubs. 
but there's a huge element of what happens now is Instagram led. How many is, followers? Is fashion you... led is the people coming into the scene that are in it for the wrong reason, mm -hmm. and they're not in it for to be DJs to play music. They're in it because they might get a bit of fame out of this, mm -hmm. or their Instagram they'll, they'll create a following there, and some sitting going and they're, they're fucking horseshit. <laughs> they're fucking bollocks, and it's quite difficult to sit and no, watch. You go. My it's whole aspect, right? So see if they 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 want to do that, right? That's fine. Charge on, and, and you can work hard and get mm -hmm. good. You can you can work hard and get good, and I've no issues with that. But some of them are given real platforms to play on, and I really feel that it's actually the punter has been mm -hmm. cheated because mm -hmm. the punter is not getting the experience that I had. Mm -hmm. That where I would stand there and go with a DJ, I would trust them, and I knew the DJ would deliver a journey. If that's no, I definitely. They would deliver it. It would be programmed properly. It'd be the warm up. They'd be the middle, and they would just blow it. And anybody who experienced those those sort of journeys, they can still get them. Mm -hmm. There is there are there's stuff there. Some DJs are really good. The music is really good, as I said. But there's a lot of people are being cheated of the dance floor mm -hmm. experience that I had, and I feel for them. Um, I hope it changes. I don't know if it will. Uh, it's quite disheartening to see it sometimes. But that's the way the world. I've, I've had my time. I, it's time for these these kids to come on and take take take, take control. Away, you know? Absolutely, we're we're we we've, we've lived our best year. We've had it. We don't get me wrong. We're still doing some good stuff, and I'm still enjoying DJing. But we're not trying to reinvent the wheel now. No, we're and I think the um, like just have your name, John. I've got. I mean, we'll go into that later. But just, you've got a, 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 a kind of big big name <clears> in the DJ world in Scotland. Do you know what I mean? And you'll, you'll always attract people. Um, but as you say, I think when you're like I, I watched a, 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 I liked Avicii, right? I loved Avicii, yeah. and I watched the I watched his program, and I, I felt so sorry for him, like just the way. And, and you, I mean, you look at him, and you look, you just think that guy's living life to the best. He's living life, and you don't see what's happening behind the scenes. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it, I suppose it's just like when you speak to football players and actors. We've had all, everybody, all types of people in here, and you always think. And I think it could be social media that you like you're flicking through and you think your world your world shit because there's when that's yeah. no the real projection. So do you know what I mean? It's so false. Do you know what so I mean? False. Um, Avicii, Avicii, Avicii had a, had a had a great start probably, but then he was running into the ground. Aye. Um, and that's that's the corporate thing, isn't it? Like, well, it comes to his management and stuff in the I end. I think I heard there was a huge management deal in favour of the management. That I could be wrong, right? Could be hearsay, but I, I seen him, I seen right. him being bundled into a van straight in DJ for an hour next and away. I think he'd done something like 280 gigs <sighs> in a year. You go, the fuck can you do that? That's bummed out, and I, I think that's why he drunk and he. I, I don't think that. he was a big drinker, but he think he'd to cope with the nerves. You've got to remember, these, these kids have been thrust into the limelight and, and having to cope with this. We, we are, so, we, ours was a slow thing, Aye. right, when you came through the ranks and stuff, and I'm, listen, fucking, never, never reached any of that, that sort of heights, but you could deal with, if you've done 5, 10, 15, 20 years, then you can deal with society, Aye. and the the, the, the the pressures of it, but these, Richie came from nowhere, I know, as a producer, and then obviously they seen there was money in DJing, and threw him into the DJing, and for him it got up, to be the guy mm -hmm. that they're, they're there to see the pressure must be immense for a for a uh, uh, an experienced an DJ. Bit, but fucking this kid, I know, was being thrown in, and that's why I, I believe they started drinking heavy and stuff, I and know. that's where he suffered. And then obviously depression, everyone probably sets in on the back of that. Aye. You're sitting there going, oh, how could you, how could you fucking millionaire and you've got the I world know. at your feet? You've got different pressures. Aye, your life shit still. It doesn't mean like, we all know that money doesn't, but we don't, we all, listen, we don't love to have money and, 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 and have, but it, it certainly doesn't buy happiness and joy, do you know what I mean? It's, no. um, you, you give what you wish for sometimes. Aye. I've seen a lot of the, the New Year kids coming through and being, they get a, they get a hit and they push through and I can see them struggling. Mm-hmm. Something to deal with the the the, the touring schedule Aye. and being away from home. Basically, mm -hmm. simple stuff. It's nice to go back. And I know stuff. But well, we had we had Andy Henderson on here. He was he was in uh, he was in the Daikinis. I don't know if you yeah. remember yeah. them. But Andy said like the same thing. We were young boys. He says we were doing party and we out and joining. Like he says he pumped us right up. 
he went, we're going to be the next thing. He says, and we needed Radio One to take his own. He says, and for whatever reason, they never. But they'd signed a contract. I don't know what it was, but it was like a three album deal or whatever. And when they, Sony, it was a company that was linked to Sony, but when they released them, they, they didn't, they still kept the contract. So he, Elton John was why to take him on their uh -huh. label, but he couldn't, because yeah. they wouldn't release. And you're like, why would you do that if you don't want them? Yeah, so they probably paid them in advance as well, probably. I don't really know how it all works with something, but it's a fucking bad world. Oh, it's sad, <laughs> isn't it? Like, it's just it's cruel, man, world. isn't it? Like, crushing, yeah. crushing the hopes of, like, four or five young boys yeah. when you don't need to, like... Yeah, but that comes down to probably at the start where you go, what, what deal are you wanting here? I know. Kind of naivety and, and... Is that something that you would ever look into, like, even trying to help the younger DJs, even create so I've a, helped quite creating a few. A wee, aye. I've helped quite a few to start with. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I looked after quite a few. Um, I just, it was never never management or anything. I just helped. I was a sort of mentor for a few. Hannah Lane. Aye, aye, aye. I helped, I helped Hannah a wee bit at the start. Um, helped get her, her. She's brilliant, man, Hannah Lane. Yeah, uh, helped her get her, her first first couple of tracks, mm -hmm. I think, signed different places. And yeah, just gave just her advice. Just eye on it. That was it, and and then Hannah Hannah um, moved on. Mm -hmm. Just basically, and then she got she got in touch with her new manager. Her Aye, new manager's brilliant. Aye, uh, he's a pretty he's pretty good. He's done a fucking phenomenal job there. Absolutely phenomenal. I saw doing a, um, I mean guys like yourself that have kind of went through the whole because it has it's been it's it's moved so much. It's a, it's a scene that probably isn't he like any other like in the way that the how massive the shifts are and how um yeah. so to have people like yourself who's experienced from the start to now is probably priceless for a lot of people yeah yeah it'd be nice if i was a young coming through and, and i knew it you might remember there wasn't there's nothing happened we were the first to do what we were doing type thing Oh, you have created the path. Yeah, for but, us. but we've there was there was no real book then. There was Aye. no there was no experience, so somebody couldn't come and say to you, well, "Here's what you should be doing DJ wise," because we Aye. didn't fucking know. It was le like kind of learning from mistakes yeah, and stuff. There was there was there was no real. We were even putting on events like mm -hmm. the, the 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 fun crazy times that like Ricky and Jamsy and all that stuff that Dumby Street they was just wild. What they were they were just fucking. <laughs> and I had the fucking Madness. airport. Aye. I had an airport. The Presswick Airport. I swear, I had Presswick Airport. How the fuck do you get an airport? Aye. No, I've got an airport. <laughs> Kidding on. So it's a terminal building where you check in. Aye. It's done six parties there. Aye. It's crazy. For the JM people, fucking, the fucking what? TTF, all this shit. So Even there. look at Keith Flint. I mean, I, I loved the prodigy. They were one of my favourites. And when you, uh, like, obviously, I think with Keith Flint had a lot of mental health problems and I seem, seems to, I, I mean that music, that genius kind of thing seems to um, affect a lot of people in different ways. But I think the music scene you see quite a lot with people who are very talented. Yeah. And then they kind of kind of cope with, I don't know if it's growing up or just kind of cope with, with life in general. So maybe they just see society for what it is or whatever, I don't know. I, I, uh... It's a, it's, a, it's, it's odd. Some people take 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 like a duck to water, and some people just fold. Aye. Uh, there's a lot of pressures. There's a lot of no nice things in the dance scene. Aye. Um, and there's a lot of hard work to get to to get good. Mm -hmm. I've seen people come along through all the who didn't work hard and faked it and got where they are. And you Aye. Go, <laughs> fucking imposter or whatever. Aye. But there's a lot of people who have worked hard. And there's a lot of behind the scenes things. It's fucking more professional than it's ever been. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know. Uh, but I know all these said the LF system. Aye. As as I've I've, I've helped helped Connor, I've taught Connor how to DJ when he was with a fourteen year old right. guy. Um, but I've seen the guys get their number one Aye. eight weeks, eight week, ten weeks. Aye. And they beat Calvin Harris's record. These two wee guys look at me just. Fucking great wee guys. And they might, Genuinely they might fucking the next... nice guys and all these coming through. Aye. The Scottish guys that are coming through, or the young team. Aye. Uh young Christian Rogers is coming through. Um and they've they've all been thrust into a different sort of mm -hmm. limelight, whereas you could you could make or break. Aye. So I know like I know Hannah suffered really badly Aye. with nerves and stuff mm -hmm. beforehand. I know she really did. Um 
And it's, we it's, it's that thing, John, where, do you know, sorry for butting in, but it's that thing where we get is people who don't watch, people who are only DJs and stuff, watch that and go, that's the best job in the world, right? Yeah. But we don't see, again, we just only see you guys, Gina is having an amazing time. We don't see what your backstory, yeah. do you know what I mean? And the pressures that you've got, you don't see yeah. it. Yeah, well, I mean, I just, I just, not much compared to what the, the young guys are going now. They're they're travelling the world. I know. I don't know about a good bit of travel with DJ, but they're they're touring America. Because Europe's quite a big it's, scene, isn't it? Europe's tour, huge. Australia, isn't it? America, they're just touring the world. Aye. Uh, but Sean, and, Sean, as an LF system, they're, they're fucking everywhere. Aye. Uh, and I know it takes its toll on them. I know, I know they come back and they're tired and they're they miss their families and stuff. And I, I know probably Hannah does the same. Aye. Uh, I yeah. think having just you, you probably don't even know how invaluable you are to them then, John, really. I, I, I just I just sort of helped them with advice and that at the start. And Hannah was part of a team that we we had. And we, I was just sort of guiding them a wee bit. They still made all their decisions in Aye. the end. It was only advice and that stuff. And it was, it was yeah, it was great to see them develop into something great. But see, I mean, Hannah's she, fucking smashing it. She's no, fucking, she's, fa she's brilliant. And it, but it's similar, I mean, it's so different right but it's it, you can make the kind of um, you can make that kind of example where when I went to prison I didn't have a fucking clue like I was so out of depth um, it was wild it was mad it was how totally bad different. was it? when I went to Pullman it was fucking really really bad uh, Pullman was I, I'd done DJ lessons at Pullman aye what did you I mean because you're likable, John, because you're a nice guy, you probably would have been all right, right? You were but fine. It's... Sorry, they've done them in sections. Aye. Am I right in saying that the sex offenders would be treated differently? Aye. Aye, they don't get... Well, they, they they get there in a different hall, so they don't... Yeah, so I've done two sections Aye. and that was that... Uh, yeah, unfortunately, that's the that's the way they, they, they were I know. there. That, Aye. That's the way the judging all the jails anybody, Absolutely no judging. No, anybody. it's the way the, all the jails splat. They, but I... Uh, uh, <sighs> It was. It seemed when it was fine when I was there. Aye. They were having a good time. They were. They were happy to see what, DJ. What year was it, John? Do you, do you know? Can you remember? Sorry, what? What year? No idea. Don't mate. know. No idea. Um, no, you go because it was just. It was about fifteen years anyway ago. Right. Probably. As my mate who's a DJ says, "Can you come down and show these kids how to?" So I think they're obviously trying to put stuff Aye. on so that. See, listen, here's a life outside, or you can go and do Aye. this. And, and DJ wasn't wasn't really sought after at the time. Aye. But it went down with it. Decks and all that stuff, and showed them. I think young Calvin Logue, aye, done Barlini. Aye, no, no long ago. Aye, 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 aye young Calvin right. done aye. So, I mean, I, listen, it's like we we do need more. Of it. People have got their idea of prison, right? And I, I, people that go hard line and all that, and give them nothing, fine. But you can't demonise them when they come out and do the same thing. Then, if you if you're not willing to put the rehabilitation in, then you can't expect people to change. Do you know what I mean? Because society and the uh, poverty and this is the issues that are causing these boys to be what yeah. they are or girls. It's no, um, they don't grow up when they're three year old and go, I want to be yeah. a big fucking drug Do dealer. I've tried to explain this to many a person mm -hmm. who judge people Aye. and they go, they're doing that, they're just fucking scumbag. Like that. No, Aye. there's something behind that. Aye. So they're either uneducated or Aye. they've come from a family background that's done that yes. or there's something else and they didn't understand it. He says, you just count yourself lucky mm -hmm. that you come from a safe home you're, you're reasonably well looked after and all that sort of thing. Definitely. But you go, these kids have maybe grew up and fuck all. Aye. And they've been doing a bad path. It's Aye. absolutely toxic. Uh, yeah, I can put you in a bad mood for the fucking day. If Aye, I, definitely. I used to have an awful... Fucking... I did get involved in a lot of arguments with fucking arguing with strangers. Like, what the <laughs> fuck are you doing? You're still a fucking idiot. And Twitter like... Fucking I know. <laughs> Yeah. See if he was here I'd fucking go to his door you know, <laughs> fucking I know. just stupid just Aye. and they're not giving a fuck no. you've ruined your fucking day because you're not so I, I took a really big step back for Aye. social media and I use it just as a, as a I, I like a laugh Aye. I like a laugh on it Aye. it used to be a good laugh and I would used to have a fucking load of bangers on my page <laughs> men, men. Oh. and I would like the touch paper Aye. there they go Throw in the fucking sticky dynamite, and they would fucking come out the water, out the water, out the, out the holes. and and I had a great laugh watching them. Aye. But people have to separate themselves with social media. Definitely. Facebook. I keep saying this to a guy called Neil Hood. Neil's fucking there. 
Facebook isn't real. Aye. It's no real, mate. Aye. Nothing <laughs> it's fucking real. People, but people want to live their life on I it. Know. They fucking have got mates and stuff who'll put everything personal up you got up. And that's just no me. Definitely. If you want to do that, it's your page, not your sell out. But there's but there's pitfalls at the back of that. Be careful. Massive. I, I, it's, I don't use it either. I use it for my for this for like the podcast and stuff like that. I don't put any of my own kind of personal stuff on it, and that's for that for the yeah. reasons. I can get, I easily can get scrolling and going, fucking hell! I, like I need to do this and I need to, and it can you start procrastinating because you're looking yeah. at the, other people's fake lives. Do you know what I mean? Um, and I guess I think it's designed to do that. To be honest, I think it's designed to. To kind of keep us that it's designed way, for hate. Aye. It's designed to split Aye. people up. It's Def- designed for division. division. Definitely. It's fucking horrible. You sit because you things that people get away with. You sit and go, oh, they're they're Tory, they're Labour, they're Trump, they're fucking that. You know what Aye. I mean? It all comes Definitely. into this Or they're vax, or they're anti-vax, or they're fucking Aye. they're conspiracy, and it's all split. Aye. And they get into these groups, and that's a pet hate of mine. It's people grifters, Aye. grifters who make a fucking living or rip people Aye. and f- get them to f- they just say stuff because it creates a popularity or they're mm-hmm. running a fucking patron Definitely. page patron Aye. patron patron, Aye, patron. Page. Aye. and but, oh there's a guy I seen it he's, he's deleted me for his fucking page he's a fucking banger I don't care what, what fucking say about it but he's got all these pages Aye. conspiracy pages he's got six, seven, eight, nine fucking I've saved this fucking and then it, it brought me up it's talking about like Keep cash, keep cash, keep cash, and you go get to the bottom, and you go. You've just asked people to pay Aye. your fucking monthly money to that thing Aye. there, but it was I seen him as a grifter, Aye. paying people, getting people who are who are looking for a bit of looking for answers. I know, and believing certain things, and that's fine for everybody. Mm-hmm. But people believing in certain things, and these people come along, mm-hmm. they go. Oh, if you could yeah. see if you could, do, like I've been doing it, you could in the rabbit hole. What I found out, I would, you could do that, oh, you listen to all these places, you watch, blah, blah, blah. But see, when you get to the end, of it, you just see that see the elite people who are actually running yeah. that, that actual elite. It doesn't matter what happens in our world. Yeah. If they win, they, they win. They're untouchable. Aye, they, they win, whoever wins the war in Russia, whoever wins the war there, they win. Like, they, they've got both sides. They cover both sides. Yeah. And, and once you realise that, you do need to look at yourself and go, I can't fix any of that. You just need to go on with it. But I get why... People like, I like conspiracy theory, but David Icke's the same. David Icke talks about, oh, this, this, and then at the bottom it's like, here, buy, the, buy aye. this, and it's like, I've got a t shirt with a, 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 a lizard on it for 50 quid, and you're like, <laughs> what? Do you know what I mean? It's like, it, you're, t- you're talking about all these people and how they're stealing yeah. money. and I, they, all, they all do it, and it's quite difficult to. Russell Brand's the same. Aye, Russell Brand's went for be that posh guy. I know. That fucking thing with you to do. And I like Russell Brand and all the way he talks that. Yeah, so. because you want because he says things you want to hear. I know. And what you believe yes. in. And he he he's he's captured that. He's he's he has. I'm I'm gonna do this and say Aye. this. And he wasn't like that before. I know. I see him as a grifter. Aye. Uh people say, Oh, he's only telling the truth. He's he's not telling the truth, he's just saying mm-hmm. what's available. Aye. It's all in line. He's not Andrew Tate, I know Andrew Tate says he he's he talks about this, day this, day that, and like I but See for people that are in social deprivation and at yeah. the bottom, they're so unaware of what you're talking about. Yeah. They've not got the awareness to do what you're saying. Like you're saying, you're saying, do this and do that and be disciplined. But these people don't know any of these things. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They've never, never been taught any of it. So where did yeah. they start? Show them. And yeah. it's already saying that to people that have got money. And I'm like, oh, I know you could go Let's in go for back those. To music. I know you could go in for those. <laughs> <laughs> fuck the grifters. I know, fuck them, I know. <laughs> Um, so just like we're just as we're kind of coming up to then, John. Um, if you what kind of what free in the future, what's coming up for you? Um, so d- during lockdown, I created a few brands. Uh, myself and Kilke, we have we have uh, Electric Dreams. I've seen that, but it looks so. Electric Dreams is, is is something we created, um, and it's me, and Michael, back to back for 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 decks, and we play. Old school, Aye. new school, we pay a bit. It's, it's, we're no reinventing the wheel. That's a, it's a party. Because the people that are coming to your gigs are 30 plus. Aye. Uh, they're out to have a party. They don't go out that much. And they're just enjoying life again. Aye. But we got a lot of young kids who want to come through and experience what we experience. Because they all look back and they go, their brother, big brother and sisters, or their mums and dads just tell them, or fucking grannies and that. Fucking, <laughs> I've told them about these Aye. glory years. And we, we talk about them. Oh, Misty Aiden, great. So they come and try and experience 
Uh, and we also have a thing called Guilty Pleasures. Aye, I've seen Guilty that. Guilty Pleasures is, is probably the best thing a day. Aye. It's anything, 70s, 80s, fucking for, for ACDC to Barney Man, a lot of disco. Aye, love ACDC. And it's great. And I'll it's let all, you come it's and all, try it. It's all edited up and it's all Aye. mixed. And it's a, it's a phenomenal, we have a, such a good crowd that come here and have get fucking wrecked and fucking sing their heart out. <laughs> it's a total escapism. Aye. For six hours we play back to back and we just... So where is this, where is it, John? So they're, they're at the, the, the Guilty Pleasures at the Radisson Red. Right. Uh, Electric Dreams at the Radisson Red, but we that take that... That was right, up, was there. Yeah, we take that to the, the Sky Bar. And then we go, we go on the road with, with Electric Dreams and that as well. We've also got a thing called Big Shiny Disco Brunch. She's got drag queens and singers and and that's more disco house, vocal house. And and they're really good. Aye. They sell out in, in a minute. Aye. We're putting them in sale and they're selling out straight Where away. can we fight, obviously, for people? Where can uh, we fight? Uh, uh, everywhere, mate. Aye. Really, there's the local to me. There's uh, So we do the welfare in Faltus. Sounds a bit stupid and folk Aye. laugh, but it's one of the best parties. Aye. It's 300 people in there who go absolutely apeshit. Who love a bit of disco house. Aye. Uh, vocal house, some IB fans, and it's a great, it's just a party. Aye. Um, we do a rumba up at uh, the V&A Museum in Dundee. We're actually in the museum. Aye. So we've got a aye, week in the museum, aye. In aye. museum, aye. We, we're weighing up there, uh, the rumba. And that's great. And we have Radisson, we do a lot of stuff with the Radisson. Aye. I've um, seen that a lot. I've we've seen... also got some of DJs aye. still, still party. Aye. The street they've set up as well. The street they've got that, uh, the Pavilion Festival coming up, which was, Phenomenal last year. Aye. One of the best sets and the most emotional sets I've done in a long time. I don't know, that, obviously, Mallorca Lee's just died there. Yeah. And I, um, he was a big kind of, he was yeah. a friend of yours, wasn't he? Aye. That, that was a, that's a sore <sighs> one. I know. That's a sore one, Mal. Uh, He's a legend, didn't he? Brian yeah. actually sent me a, a video of him in a... I don't know where it was, but they they, they, they were in bed, it was public domain and he sent me the, the video and it was when he was jumping about on his table. So Mallorca was the was the probably one of one of the best frontmen for a dance act. Oh aye. Uh, he's up there, he's just done his thing. It's really odd, Mallorca, because a very nice, sort of quiet, absolutely family man. Mm-hmm. Family, family, family true. He's fucking his missus and his two kids. Uh, but underneath, very, very, um, very sensitive guy, believe it or not. Aye, right? very sensitive, very, didn't really get involved in mm-hmm. anything that, 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 would, that would fuck his, his mind up for the day or something. He was just wanted an easy life and loved his music and very talented. Aye. Very talented. So, like, didn't like any any hassle that he stayed out like didn't like stayed away for that and and he is he, such a big character man i just remember as being a big funny laugh every time i fucking we spoke on the phone or something he just fucking take the piss or aye this is, is actually amazing because i've done a few we've done a podcast with him aye. and i sat in with him and we had a fucking laugh for two and a half hours <laughs> and it's good was rem- re- uh, reminiscing with a guy who's been there as well and, and the scene and at the times because i think the first time i seen him was we, I think we think we had we had Presswick Airport doing one of the Eurodances. I think he broke in the back door. <laughs> I think they kicked the door in. I think. That's a right story. <laughs> they, ah, fucking, he's up big Ricky. I want a fucking gig here. I want a gig we use. And fucking, that was it. And I never had much to do with Mallorca then. Aye. Because we were past, there was a lot of things, DJs, you knew everybody. Aye. And, but you were never in the same thing with him because they were always DJing in different parts and he was doing his thing. And ultrasonic, that wasn't really my thing. Aye. Uh, that that scene was not really my thing. I was Aye. doing house music and stuff, and that. And he, he always laughs. He used to always go, "Oh, we were playing fucking uh, an LA rhythm or whatever it's called," <laughs> and, and and you're playing fucking M people, yeah, <laughs> kind of that Aye. fucking flowery stuff. And that, just laughing. Aye. He always slags me for that. But what a what a what a fucking miss, man. Stay. Uh, I can't believe that I'll never see him again. I can't believe that because I. I, I through through his, his his illness, it was fucking so quick. I know. It was it was fucking difficult. Uh, yeah, it was really difficult. I, know, I know a lot of people who are fucking we're all broken hearted about it because he's such a big character. No, no, I... P, his hashtag show, to his to his paintings, to his albums, to his music, to his fucking ultrasonic, to everything. There's so much that he that he brought. Aye. He was super talented, but I just knew him as fucking big mama mate. Aye. So. 
I know. No, listen, he's a he's going to be a massive loss um, to to a lot of people, and um, you can only just. I mean, public domain. Were, were brilliant. Ultras, I grew up with. I loved ultrasonic. Do you know what I mean? They were one of my favourites. Ultrasonic's but, where I remember them. Aye. Yeah. See, I didn't. I didn't actually know. Like as I say, I missed all that era, and I missed Resurrection. Yeah. No, I never got to see Resurrection, and that's obviously. I, I know they've done one in there, but. I've seen the videos. I still, I've actually looked up the videos and looked up the old Resurrection yeah. videos and stuff. Do you know what I mean? And um, and I like rhythm and all that. Like, oh, I love it. Do you know what I mean? The yeah. See, I, I mean, I, I told him. I says, I think they're fucking. I, say, I know. I know. That's Brian, you, garbage, Brian used to say to me, I know. I'm not saying that's that fucking dog shit. You're playing well. <laughs> I'm fucking sitting there and got up. I thought you were in New York. <laughs> what do you mean? She's, just had the boy talking the microphone, he fucking with this accent, and I slagged him all the time. There's a few of the MCs, a fucking MC corrupt, I used to go fucking always that uh, because I thought he was for London. <laughs> all right, <laughs> so I used to slag my work, like fucking uh, talking about in the hood and all that stuff. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I know. No. I, had, I had a good, I had a good, I had a good relationship with him all. Um, yeah, fucking sad day. I know. When we fucking started it. I'll fucking. <laughs> I know. Yeah, get big miss, big, 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 big personality. Aye. And gets all deserves all the plaudits he gets. Um, he built that. Uh, yeah. I know. So just as we're coming up, John, I always give like the the guest just the last wee message, like, and I always try and get it to maybe people that. So you, uh, that, there'll be a lot of people probably watch this that are into dance music and stuff, and you'll get some people that have maybe kind of an addiction, whatever, and recovery. And I always try and get the wee message just to these people that are sitting there. Um, so I'll just give you the last message, John. Um, just if you can get a wee message for them there that life is bollocks. Life Aye. is bollocks. I don't know where we go. We fucking with politics and all that stuff. We're not going to see any change. No. No matter if Labour gets in. I know. Right? I've supported Labour all my days, right? Keir Starmer's a bell end. Jeremy Corbyn know was the last fuck, one, wasn't he? He was the, he was the hope for I me. I know, he was my hope Jeremy for me. Jeremy Corbyn was the man for, for change for me. I know. I was hoping. It was different for the rest. People were sliding for fucking over. But I was hoping he was saying, he got to be the change. Um, it's pretty, pretty bleak. But mm -hmm. see if you just, in, in my book, See, we just do your own thing. Mm -hmm. you just work hard. Believe in yourself. It's all fucking cliche stuff. Uh, it's but self belief massive. I never believed myself. I still fucking don't mm -hmm. suffer from imposter syndrome. Aye. So you like, never do that. You'll never do that. Mm -hmm. People are not going to come. People don't like you. People don't. Mm -hmm. Self doubt is, a, is, is, is quite difficult Horrible. to deal with. So, see if you can get over that. And if you've actually got a talent, fucking. Mm -hmm. By all means, there was a thing. See, when I left school, I never get any any help mm -hmm. for, for parents or because that wasn't you get a mm -hmm. job. We need the big money. Mm -hmm. See if you have a talent and you see something you really like. See if you can get back into people mm -hmm. or somebody to support you to go and go to. It. I wish I'd done music production earlier. I wish I'd been a sound engineer earlier. I wish I'd done all that earlier. Because mm -hmm. I've had my time. Mm -hmm. Still doing stuff, but I've had my time. And I've fucking led a a, a, a a great life in dance music and stuff. I've loved it every fucking minute. It's been some fucking pitfalls, obviously, but you know, absolutely believe in yourself. Mm. And people, it's nice if people see something in somebody Aye. and they back them. Definitely. Because I, I say it to my nieces and nephews, what do you like? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, what do you say, Well, let's get something that you really like Aye. and we'll help you and we'll, 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 we'll try and... Mm. Not to that. Mm -hmm. I said to my niece, you want to be a DJ? She went, no. I said, you didn't know what? I could probably make you open some nice point. doors here for mm -hmm. you and help you and fucking make you a, a decent idiot. No, I'm trying to stop. Aye. Where did you say? 14, 15. 14. Oh, I know you, want to, you want to get this about the age you want her in. But I want her to do something that she's happy with. I know. Same with my nephew, same with my other niece and that. So mm -hmm. Of course. I want every me happy. I used to say, see, with the prison system, I used to say this, the self-belief in the prison system and the self-doubt is covered up and masked by anger, violence and stuff like that. And it's people that don't know how to do anything that go, I'm good at that. I'm good at fighting. I'm good at that. I can do that. I, and it's trying to teach, look at Jimmy Boyle and that. And we, have Dave, we had David Heyman on this on, on the, the show and he went into the, the special unit in Berlin where yeah. it's supposed to be the worst prisoners, the worst of the worst. And he says that we had them acting, we had them singing, we had them like writing poetry. He says that the amount yeah. of talent that was there, everybody's got talent. Yeah. 
it's that's, just trying to it's trying to get it out, John, isn't it? That's it's exactly trying to, what I'm trying to say mm-hmm. there. If you've got a talent or a passion, mm-hmm. then find if it. You see it in somebody, then help them get mm-hmm. it out. No, always. No, I know. Ask this to a lot of kids or whatever. I say, what do you like? Mm-hmm. What do you want to do? Don't know. What do you want to do? I don't, don't know. know. I'm just got to get a job. He's like, but see if there's another option. See, you're into football or you're mm-hmm. into music or you're into fucking whatever. Aye. Because. I was fortunate I'd done a job that I loved. Mm-hmm. It wasn't work. Aye. DJing isn't work. I know. If you, I'm if you love being it, paid no. sometimes mm-hmm. to go and do these parties where the the, the, the connection between the DJ and the, the, the crowd is indescribable. Having the time of your life with these people and you have it in your... And the, you have the control on it and it's fucking something else. And the, the, to, to play music that you love... To see people enjoy what you do is a pretty special fucking thing. So if you f- have a passion, aye, and you have a job, it's, it's no work. No, it's no work if you get it, mate. Aye, no, definitely, I agree with you so much, John. But uh, listen, John, thank you very much for coming out. It's been absolutely brilliant having you on. See me sliver and piss you. <laughs> brilliant, thank you. Love you, Brian. <laughs>